also you've been able to get to, to, to see what happened and, and to help people. I, I don't need to go very far from where I live because uh, uh, that area has been very affected. Uh, right now also uh, there is a lot going on as you can imagine. The, uh, we are trying to uh, to keep the, the streets uh, empty of cars to allow all the ambulances and the emergency services to, uh, to circulate uh, freely. So uh, just the area where I live has been uh, highly affected and, and um, yeah, I can see uh, a lot of despair around uh, in, this, uh, in this area. Yeah, we're looking at some, uh, some file footage from uh, a few days ago, right now while you and I speak. And you know, when we hear so much about the, uh, the impact of this explosion, how much, how much, uh, how powerful it was, you know, kind of even like a, a low, uh, payload, a small payload nuclear bomb was the effect that this had. Um, what is right now, Violin, the search, the status of the search for survivors? Uh, you know, we keep talking about the death toll and the number uh, of injured, and uh, we're 50 hours into this now. Um, is anybody still alive under the rubble? That I cannot tell you. Uh, I think right now what we are focusing on, of course there are teams that are taking care of that, but on our side uh, what we are focusing on is more the, the people who are in need of uh, medical care, uh, emergency medical care. Uh, we are also looking at assisting those who have lost their houses and have nowhere to go right now. There's 300 thousand people on the street uh, right now so this is also one of our top priority uh, the canadian red cross is is there to help the lebanese red cross right now the lebanese red cross has 125 ambulances um, stationed uh, in, in in different parts of the city they are responding to calls 24 hours since the blast uh two days ago so it's they're doing an amazing job uh, they are also uh, relieving a little bit the uh, the health system that is, is is really overwhelmed right now. So they are playing a critical role uh, in this operation, and uh, we are there to, to support them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you know the further geographically we are away from from what happened to Beirut, we we tend to become uh, sort of preoccupied with assigning blame and looking for a cause here. But this is all a distant second to. Uh, to the effect of this tragedy. And it's important to underscore here that, uh, that there's so much uh, need in, uh, in, in this country prior to, to what happened on Tuesday, correct? I mean, this uh, generational crippling economy, um, the, uh, the country having all kinds of political uh, turmoil as well, and you're saying hundreds of thousands of people homeless. Now on top of issues like the fresh water and um, food, You've got the COVID-19 situation and infections were spiking leading right up to this one thing. Yeah, and uh, this is critical right now for the first responders and for the hospital staff, the medical staff, because they have to continue to protect themselves against COVID. And so now they have to wear this uh, personal protection equipment and, and this is part of some of the material that we uh, are providing because uh, now we need like you know exponentially more of that kind of equipment in addition to all the rest medical equipment uh, ambulance equipment and all that but it adds a layer of complexity to the operations because everything needs to be sanitized uh, disinfected after each patient um, and and also it's it, I visited two hospitals ER yesterday and it's difficult for people to keep social distancing in, in those situations. So people are trying to do their best. Everyone is wearing a mask. But, but yeah, the, the situation was already overwhelming for hospital and, and healthcare system in general with the COVID. Now it's, it's really, uh, it's really uh, an additional challenge for them, mm -hmm. for sure. And all of a sudden the backdrop of a potential political bombshell being dropped tomorrow with the verdict in the, uh, the uh, Hariri case from back in 2005. The, uh, the Prime Minister who was, uh, who was killed, that's just adding another layer to this, this problem. Uh, real quickly, before we go, how can people help uh, the Lebanese through you? 
So right now, I think the best way for people who want to help is to give money through uh, our website, so uh, redcross.ca. Uh, the, the Canadian Red Cross is a long-time partner of the Lebanese Red Cross. We've been working in Lebanon for a number of years. We have already programs going on and support with them. So money is being channeled uh, directly to the Lebanese Red Cross. and. Um, and, and Lebanese Red Cross is apolitical, uh, yeah. is, is a neutral and impartial organization. Um, so they have the trust of the people in Lebanon and, and, and it's, uh, it's a very professional mm -hmm. and well-trained, uh, or uh, you know, the staff are very well-trained. Mm -hmm. So I think for now, for people who want to help, the best thing to do is, is, to, is to provide uh, donations. Uh, th that is what we need at the moment, to be able to scale up the operation. Violaine Derosier, a live force in Lebanon. Thank you so much for your time, really appreciate it.